Hi guys, welcome back. Today's video is a pretty exciting one. It is actually sponsored by Camera Ready Cosmetics, which I got to work with last Halloween season for this and this video. If you're interested in those at all, I will link them in the description. They're an online makeup store that has a vast variety of different makeup brands, but why I especially use them and like them is they have an entire special effects makeup section. Depending on where you live, it might be different, but for myself, I find it quite tricky to find good SFX makeup suppliers here in Canada without going to very specific specialty stores. So they're actually what I've used for many years to purchase special effects products, and the fact that they want to work with me again is very exciting. Today's video, I'm hoping to help with some questions you may have had in regards to water-activated paints versus alcohol paints. What's the difference between them, how to apply them, and when to know why you should be using one over the other. So jumping into water activated paints, there is a quick divide here that is usually useful for makeup artists to know, and that is the difference between wax base and glycerin based paints. There are some other ones such as Acacia Senegal Gum and Talc based paints, but they tend to sit kind of in the middle as far as performance goes. So if you have the idea of glycerin versus wax, you tend to have your midsection of how they perform. Glycerin based paints are often fantastic for blendability and are also great if you're going to be using a brand where you're maybe only going to start with a few colors. They tend to be easier to create highlights and lowlights, create gradients between different colors, and build on top of each other without cracking. Lots of brands offer numerous arrays of colors or even like big palettes full of like rainbow colors, but if you're just starting out you might want to kind of just get the basics, which tend to be the primary colors and white and black. So with glycerin based paints, you might find an easier time mixing them together to get those different tones. Wax based paints also have their fantastic uses though. They're just a little bit different. For instance, a lot of people who like using wax based paints tend to use it for line work and for very intense opacity. The best way to showcase this would be doing something like pulling a line on a detail brush with a glycerin based paint and a wax based paint. The wax will tend to go a lot further. It will be a lot darker and it will oftentimes be almost crisper. The reason for this being that wax dries a lot faster, it has stronger pigmentation in it, but it also has the downside of being very easy to over layer and have cracking. You even can usually tell the consistency difference when you're applying the paints. A lot of people describe wax based paints as feeling even a little bit thicker on their skin, which makes sense since they are actually kind of a thicker paint in how they apply. So then how to apply and when to use them. For application, really can do just about anything in regards to how you would normally apply makeup. As the name suggests, you do activate them with water, so you can either have a cup off to the side with some brushes in it and water that way, or you can spray water directly onto the cake and work from there. Just depends on your preference, there's really no right or wrong way there. Unless you find you have a brand that the cake seems to hold on to water, then it might start affecting the consistency of it overall. So that would be the only time I would say maybe adjust and definitely have the water off to the side as opposed to sitting in the pan. You can also apply with a sponge, which can be fantastic for covering larger areas, but also realize you're probably going to lose a little bit of your product because the sponge is going to soak it up. But also great if you're going for characters with texture, you can th use things like sea sponges and get that fun little like speckled look all over the paint. When to use them. Water activated paints have a lot of advantages. I find them a little bit easier to find suppliers for them as well as they are nicer price point wise than alcohol paints. They're also fantastic if you're going for very bright, vibrant characters or skin tones, such as doing a fantasy creature or a superhero. They have intense opacity to them and so they're fantastic for getting those really vibrant, really impactful looks. The one thing that might be tricky about them, of course, is the fact that as they are water activated, they also come off with water. Which of course means that if you're hoping to wear them out cosplaying to conventions or, you know, out for Halloween, sweat and rain might not be your best friend. One way to help mitigate this is actually doing something like sealing it with a really good sealer. And when I say a good sealer, I mean brands like this. Doesn't have to be one of those, but one thing you'll notice is that a lot of these brands are almost more theater grade, special effects, movie industry type sealers. The reason they're fantastic is they are actually built to withstand intense sweat from acting, being on stage with the stage lights, singing, dancing, all of that. A lot of the sealers you'll find in makeup stores tend to be more about just like nicely setting your makeup for the night because you usually aren't trying to stop like buckets of sweat and stuff from moving. Doing a few misted coats of different sealers will go a long way to stopping water activated paints from moving on you. Nothing's perfect of course, it's still the nature of the paint, but you should do pretty well. Moving on to alcohol activated paints. If you're looking for longevity, these are definitely going to last you quite a while. They are not easy to remove and as the name suggests again, they are activated by 99% alcohol and that is how they get removed. One thing to definitely note, 99% alcohol is very important when talking about alcohol activated paints. Anything lower will destroy your makeup. So even though 70% alcohol is often a lot easier to find, it is not going to be your friend. You need this guy. 
Alcohol paints are fantastic, not just for the longevity, but also they have a translucency to them that is a lot harder to get with water activated paints. You're able to get this feel that they're almost embedded in the skin. So they're fantastic for veining, fake tattoos, irritated skin around wounds, things like that. Something to note about this is one, because they have this translucency to them, they're not gonna be fantastic for painting your whole body into Gamora or an avatar because you're gonna take forever to build that up and you're probably never gonna get that full opaque color. Also, the palettes, as pricey as they are, do not come with a ton of products. And the reason for this, again, being they're meant to be used for almost detail work. So this can be more than enough, but probably not what you're gonna want if you're trying to do like a full body paint or something. I usually choose alcohol paints when I'm going for more realistic makeup or especially wound makeup. It might also just be that when I was taught SFX, I was using a lot more alcohol paints for things like wounds and sores and different prosthetic paintings, so I just enjoy it. For application, you definitely want to be using synthetic brushes for alcohol paints. Because you're activating them with 99% alcohol, they will dry out any kind of natural bristle. I often also use things like stipple sponges when applying, but you can see that this is almost a plastic. You probably don't want to use a normal sponge for alcohol activated makeup because it dries so incredibly quickly. Once the alcohol evaporates, that's it. It's done. You have a very short working time. So if you were using a sponge, it's probably just going to get eaten by the sponge before you ever make it to your face or hand or whatever you're applying to. So definitely want to keep it to things that are a little bit more on the synthetic side that will give you a better chance of getting the application you want. Another thing to note, 99% alcohol can of course be a little bit harsh on the skin for some people, especially if sensitivities. So another good option there is different brands like European Body Art as well as Skin Illustrator offer activators. And the reason these are fantastic is they have much softer ingredients, less harsh alcohol in them. So they'll still activate the palette and use it safely and won't destroy your makeup, but it gives you one more working time and it's not going to be as intense on the skin. And then of course for removal, very important, Water activated paints, pretty simple. I think a lot of body painters will tell you that a lot of it just comes off in the shower. Any areas where there might be some stronger pigmentation or you might get some staining areas with water activated paints, it depends on the color, the brand, as well as the area. I find like under here usually gets a lot and that's probably because um, under your arms is pretty porous. So it kind of gets stuck there. But even then just follow up with a normal makeup remover, maybe an oil cleanser, something like that. And you're usually pretty much good to go with water activated paints. Alcohol paints, a little bit trickier. You of course can remove them with more alcohol, but that might not be fun to have an alcohol bath. So there are a few other brands that offer fantastic makeup removers as well. And these will be much softer on your skin and feel a little bit more like a normal makeup remover for you. And of course, with the alcohol paints, please make sure you are using them in a well-ventilated area. As you can imagine, constantly inhaling isopropyl alcohol, probably not the best thing. So for sure want to do that either in an open space or outside, something like that. So hopefully that might've answered some questions you had about water activated paints versus alcohol paints. If you have any further questions, please feel free to just leave them in the comments. I'm happy to get back to them. But overall, a big thank you to Camera Ready Cosmetics again for supplying these products as well as uh, being interested in working with me again this year. I really, really appreciate it and I have loved working with this company every time. So if you're interested in getting more into special effects makeup, please check out their site. They honestly have a huge array of stuff. And if you're in the States, you have even more options because some of the stuff can't cross the border. So some things they can't get, like eye blood. One day I will own eye blood. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch very much. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you as always so, so much for watching. I of course will see you next video. So until then, bye guys.